knowing the difference between IMAP and POP3 could save you some headaches in the future. It could be the difference between losing your email history or having a copy that will give you a peace of mind. Also, knowing other email protocols could help you make a better decision if you are considering changing your email provider. My name is Carlos, and today we are talking about IMAP, POP3, and other email protocols like Exchange and Gmail. But what are actually POP3 and IMAP? They are email protocols that define how your email apps or your email clients communicate with the email server. When someone sends you an email, the emails arrive to the email server and sit on your mailbox. Then you can access your email via web browser using your webmail, or you can access it from your device using an email app or email client. The email app will connect to the server and will retrieve your email. The email client or app will communicate with the email server using POP3 or IMAP protocols. These email protocols will define the way how your emails are stored and safe in your device. There is another protocol that your email server uses. It is called SMTP. This is the protocol that works when you are sending emails. POP3 and IMAPs are the protocols that handle the emails that you receive. Now, when do I need to decide if using POP3 or IMAP? When you buy a new device or you get a new email address, you probably want to see or check your emails from your device. Then, you need to configure your email account on that device. That is the moment when you need to decide if you are going to use POP3 or IMAP. Let's now see the difference between IMAP and POP3. When using POP3, your device connects to the email server to retrieve your emails. Then the email gets deleted from the server. If a second computer gets connected to the server, it won't receive any new emails. They already got deleted. This will happen unless you have selected the option to leave a copy on the server during the configuration process. By default, this option is not enabled and you have to select it manually during the configuration. If you select this option, you will be able to have a copy of your emails in all your devices. When using POP3, your sent emails will be stored only on your device where you are sending the emails from. No copy of the sent emails will be stored on the server. Also, if you move emails to a custom folder, those emails will exist only on the device where you create the folder. The emails on the server won't sync with your device. In other words, there is no synchronization when using POP3. On the other hand, when using IMAP, all your emails will sync with the server. And a copy of your emails will remain on the server unless you delete them from your device or from the servers using the webmail. When you create custom folders on your device, they will be created in the server as well. Your device will sync all your emails and folders, and that includes your sent folders and emails as well. When you are using an additional computer or second device, your emails will sync as well. It may seem obvious which protocol I should use. However, here are some considerations that I have seen when working with users that have chosen or selected POP3. For example, your mailbox may provide a small storage space. Then, by downloading your emails, you will always keep your mailbox clean on the server. And you don't need to worry about the space that you are using in the mailbox. Another example is when the user considers their emails very confidential, and they don't trust to leave a copy on the server. In this case, POP3 offers a solution because all the emails would be deleted from the server. In other cases, the users didn't know the difference between POP3 and IMAP, and they just selected POP3. At this point, you may have a better idea what option is better for you. However, there are all the details that you should know about POP3, IMAP, and other email protocols. So far, we have been talking about emails only, but what about contacts and calendar? Well, neither POP3 or IMAP will sync calendar or contacts. This kind of synchronization might be possible. However, you will need additional protocols and you will need to check with your email provider if they have it. These protocols are called CallDAV and CARDAV. 
they will need additional software and configuration on your device. To complete this session, we need to mention a couple of other email protocol alternatives. They are offered by Microsoft using Exchange and Google. They provide the capability to synchronize emails, contacts, and calendar. Their personal and business solutions offers the ability to synchronize all your data across all your devices, regardless of the operating system that you use. With this, we conclude our session today about email protocols. I hope you find this video useful. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, just leave it below. And if you want to see more videos like this one in the future, or you want to find this one again, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.